Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do the keynote address today at the 18th Malaysian Education Summit 2014. I also would like to thank uh, Asli for the efforts in organizing such an important event. With the theme of changing priorities and changing trends. As a trend is changing, the priorities also have to change. And transforming Malaysian education is a very pertinent indeed. We could see the benefits of this uh, summit to provide a platform for all of us to come down here to discuss critical issues. I see people from all sectors are here today. And uh, also the Ministry seeks the opportunity to share your views at the end of the summit. That's really the government has promised to see me and deliberate to me what you have discussed at the summit. We have come a long way, surely. Before literacy was a main issue. There was once we have class by WhatsApp. All people went to the school to learn how to read and write. There were not much schools before. One more we talk about colleges or teacher training colleges. Now, literacy is no more the issue. We have 20 public universities, 530 private universities or colleges, 10,000 schools throughout the country. But we have other issues now. We do have issues on PISA. Every saying that we are in the bottom third out of 74 participating countries. We do admit that. We have issues based on Job Street Survey saying that we have poor command of English, poor character, attitude or personalities, and mismatch of skills, as being said just now. And I would say we have issues with English, with issues with critical thinking. We do have issues with soft skills and skills in general. I would say the last 30, 40 years has been, we have been generating numbers. We have been building schools and universities. We have been churning out teachers from our teachers running colleges. Now it's time for us to look into the quality of what we have produced. There were similar surveys by the Bengara, which kind of complained about the issues or surveys have been made by the job street. Hence, we come up with the education blueprint it was being launched September last year with 11 strategic uh, outlines to ensure that we rise our education quality to the international standard. It is government inspiration of better preparing Malaysian students for the needs of 21st century and increase public and parental expectations of our education policy. We work with the World Bank to establish a blueprint. UNESCO, OECD, bloggers, memorandums, town hall, and we engage with 55,000 militias throughout the country. At the higher education level, 
We are also coming up with higher education blueprint, revised, not a new one, a revised higher education blueprint, so that there's going to be a seamless integration between the schools and the higher education. As I said, the blueprint has five aspirations, which are access, quality, equity, unity, and efficiency. And trying to address, highlight five, four critical dimensions. Quality students, quality teachers. Basically, the students cannot be as good without quality teachers and school leadership. <coughs> As Big said again, the quality of parents and autonomy and decentralization. And to ensure that they are going to be quality students, we have to talk about curriculum and assessment and also need for some structural changes. In 2011, we come up with school-based assessment, or popularly known in Malaysia as PBS. Nothing to do with Sarawak Party. <laughs> I remember you very well because PBS is Sarawakian Party. And uh, we want to make sure we address the issue of exam-centric education. We want to make sure that students are holistic, Comparative, and we produce employable graduates. We abolish PMR, but I was surprised that there were state parents who insisted that we should maintain the form three examination. I was surprised. I thought I would get, we would get, the military would get an overwhelming support from the public when we abolish the PMR. But on the contrary, some parents say, why do you have to do that? We institute psychometric testing for all the students to ensure that they would understand where they are going, what would they be doing. And we measure the co-curricular activities of the students. At the same time, SBA, the school-based assessment we do empower the schools to do more. We give them greater autonomy. We're coming up with how to make sure there's going to be higher order thinking among the students. It's not an easy thing. I was deliberating yesterday with my director general. Up to the point that I nearly missed my program last night at PWTC. Deliberating, how can we do that? So we were saying that we have to depart from the teaching and learning culture to learning and facilitating culture. Learning has to come first because the students have to come first. And no more teaching has got to be facilitating. From now on, when I say learning and facilitating, I mean <coughs> What I meant is teaching and learning. We are introducing HOTS in school, higher order thinking skills in schools, but it's not easy because we have teachers who are trained not to do that. It's going to take quite some time. Then overcome our the issue of English. We have made sure, we have making sure that SPM English paper is going to be compulsory pass from 2016 onwards. We bring in Fulbright English teaching assistants from America, much to the light of Barack Obama during his visit here recently, which will be continued for another three or four years. We do bring native speakers from English-speaking countries. We have more than 300 women in the country going around 
and deliberating teaching in the rural areas. We introduced, we expanded illiteracy and numeracy screening of Linux 2.0 pro program to ensure that those in the rural areas or backward areas do know to read and write properly. The Ministry also has established English Language Standards and Quality Council to ensure things that people speak English accordingly, not Malaysian English, which is quite different, I guess. As we move into the raising the teacher's quality and improving school leadership, as I said, we start with 60% of the teachers for the next 20 years. The Ministry has introduced a new teacher charter which encompasses raising entry requirement. Only 30% of the top students can become teachers. So the minimum requirement to be teachers nowadays is 5A for your SPM, which was entirely different before. Before, anybody who want to become teachers can become teachers. So we have teachers, because we need teachers at a particular time. Instrument, UI, assessment tool based on competency and performance has been developed and we re replace the annual performance evaluation report. And there's going to be selection criteria and succession planning. Process for principles, known as new principal charter, to ensure that we get good leaders at the schools. Again, how do we know that teachers are good? How do you know that English teachers are good? We tested all 61,000 English teachers that we have. 20,000 get through with C1 and C2 pass in the CPT exam, Cambridge Placement Test. 40,000 will start below the C1 and C2 level. Now we're doing retraining for the teachers. We have done 5,000 last year. We are doing 9,000 this year. Please give me strength because I have to train all the 40,000 before end of next year. It's not an easy task, but I hope I'm in the right ministry. Again, as Nick said, we need to get parents and community, community involved. That's exactly the nice shift in the blueprint. We're shifting from school learning to system learning. We make sure that parents spend more time with children. And uh, last year, February last year, the Deputy Prime Minister, Tan Sri Muyudin Yassin, launch the parental and school toolkits that has been distributed to all schools that will all be distributed to all schools by the end of this year. The Ministry aims to distribute up to 3.2 million copies of the toolkits to parents. In 2014, it was reported that more than 320,000 teachers from 8,700 schools and 2.2 million parents in 9,023 schools throughout Malaysia must have been given training on the toolkit. Over the issue of autonomy and decentralization, we have district transformation program to ensure that they are given greater empowerment. We have 
school improvement partners in place, school improvement specialist coaches in place in the district. And I'm happy to see that over the last one year, we have seen improvement in Kedah and Sabah, where it has been introduced. And State Education Department also has been empowered and allowed to approve a development project costing up to 5 million ringgit. We do also have trust schools. It's a collaboration with the public, with the private sector. It's a public-private partnership with Yes and Amir, where we're right here, to increase autonomy to the schools, to facilitate learning, to increase student role in education, and to create a different learning environment.